sickness, tombstones, graveyards, doctors, nurses, hospitals, medication. These are some of the words that were used to describe John G. Lake's family. These were some of the words associated with John G. Lake's childhood. John G. Lake was born in a family of 16. Most of us know him as the healing evangelist. Most of us know him as the healing apostle. But we are not aware of the history of the conditions that he faced for him to reach the point that he reached and have the understanding of the revelation knowledge that Jesus is the healer. Having been born in a family of 16, eight of them had passed on due to a strange of sicknesses that had affected the family. John's Lake parents were healthy and strong, but the children were not fortunate or were not as healthy as the parents. During this time before John G. Lake came to the realization that Jesus Christ is the healer, he had lost eight of his family members, and three of them were on their way to the cemetery. John G. Lake had a brother who was suffering from a kidney problem, and this state was deplorable. He was always bedridden. On top of that, he had two sisters who were not also feeling well. One sister had five uh, cancers. She had been diagnosed of cancer. The doctors had tried their best. They had operated on her five times, but the cancer could not go. He had also another sister who had the issue of blood, and uh, her life situation was worse. She was almost dying. She was moving towards the cemetery day by day. This was before John G. Lake had an understanding and that revelation that Jesus Christ is the Lord and the Savior of the world, and also the fact that Jesus is the healer. A point to note, sometimes we might have the understanding of who Jesus is, but we may fail to have the revelation of who Jesus Christ is. John G. Lake himself he had a problem within his digestive system, uh, but he was healed at the age of 16. But he had not yet comprehended what Jesus Christ can actually do in someone's life. Fast forwarding, his brother, with a kidney problem, they decided to take him to uh, healing homes or healing rooms where he was prayed over by some of the people there, I believe one of the uh, healing evangelists at that time in Chicago was uh, Alexander Drowey. And they prayed for him, and by the grace of God, the Spirit of God came mightily upon him, and they received his healing. The family was happy. The family was ecstatic. The family was, was so grateful to God. They'd seen the light of God. Faith rose up in their hearts, and they believed that if God could heal the brother, definitely God can heal the sisters. Then they took one of the sisters to the healing rooms as well. Unfortunately, the sister did not have the faith that the brother had. The sister did not see herself worthy of healing. The sister did not see worthy herself as a real Christian. And because of that, that uh, derailed her faith towards God. But after hearing the messages, after hearing the word of God being spoken, being preached, her faith was uh, increased, her faith was uh, elevated, and she believed God for healing. John Gilek telephoned and telegraphed some of his friends, prayer partners, and they prayed for the sister. The power of God came mightily over her, over the room that they were in, over her body, and everything in her life changed. She got her healing. She was able to move around, the cancer had disappeared, the tremors, the, the tumors had disappeared, uh, her breast grew back normally. Praise God for that. So when John G. Lake saw this, faith in him rose up. He had the understanding that Jesus was the healer. However, there was still another sister who was not well, the one that is the issue of blood. At one time, John G. Lake was actually uh, phoned by his uh, brother-in-law informing him that his sister is dying. His sister is slowly going towards the cemetery, towards the graveyard. 
So if you wanted to see her, he was supposed to go as soon as possible. So he went to uh, the sister's house, and for sure the sister was bedridden. Uh, the parents were crying by the corner. The husband looked hopeless, uh, and he himself thought in his heart, thought in his mind, that my sister is not supposed to die. Jesus had died for her. She was not supposed to die. In his heart, he had this understanding that I need to pray. We need to pray for her that she may not die. However, at that time, she was unconscious. And signs were there that she definitely was on her way to hell. She was on her way to the deathbed. She was on her way to, to the cemetery. Then, from Norway, he decided to contact his prayer partners uh, that they might pray over her. They prayed over her. They prayed over her. And the power of God came might upon her. She was delivered from her sickness. She was delivered from her pain. And by Christmas of that year, she was sitting at the dinner table with the family, rejoicing and praising the Lord. It was not far. It was not far from over. John Gileg still had challenges. His wife was still ill. His wife was still sick. John Gilek went to her, but the state was not pleasing. He had doubts, his faith was weak, and one of the brothers, one of the ministers came to him and said, Brother John, uh, prepare your wife, prepare yourself, uh, and resign to the will of God. By that, he meant, it's time for your wife to die, it's time for your wife to go, Accept that this is the will of God. Accept that it's a time to go. These were harsh words, according to John G. Lake, and an insult to God. He asked himself, what is going to happen to my children? Who is going to look after them? Then in anger, in confusion, he threw his Bible on the table. Then his Bible opened providentially, to Acts 10, 38. And when he read the scripture from Acts 38, it says, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, and went forth doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Oppressed of the devil? He asked himself. He reread he re -read again that scripture. And he came again through those words, oppressed of the devil. Then something sprang up in his heart. Something sprang up in his soul. Then he realized that sickness was not from God, but sickness was of the devil. This is an area that most Christians struggle with. They believe that sickness is from God. They believe that God is teaching them something by inflicting them through sickness, by inflicting them through pain. They believe that God is a reason for inflicting them with pain. But if you look at this scripture, the Bible says Jesus went forward healing them all that were oppressed of the devil. He also made a cross reference to the book of Luke where he came across a story of the woman of the issue of blood and Jesus said look at this woman whom Satan had bound for these 18 years and Jesus healed her, Jesus delivered her because she was bound of the devil. And at one time Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I believe in the book of Isaiah as well uh, in Matthew chapter 4. The spirit of the Lord is upon me for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel, to proclaim liberty to captives, to set them that are oppressed, to deliver them that are oppressed of the devil. In other words, the Lord was saying that he has been anointed by God to deliver them that were oppressed. Them that are damp must speak. Them that are blind must see. At one time, John asked these disciples when he was in prison, is Jesus the Messiah or should we expect someone else? And Jesus said, go and tell John what you see. The blind have their eyes opened. The dump had their tongue loosed. The deaf had their ears opened. The lame 
if they are uh, walking restored. That's what Jesus came to do. He, have, he came to destroy the works of the devil. So when John Jileke, this revelation that Jesus was the healer and God does not cause diseases, diseases are caused by the devil, diseases are caused by sin, not by God. He then saw that when Jesus was healing the sick, he was doing the will of God because it doesn't make sense for Jesus to move around healing the sick whilst God wanted those people to remain sick. In other words, Jesus will be uh, not doing the will of the Father. Jesus will be going against the will of God. But at one time, God said, This is my Son, in whom I am well pleased in. Listen to him. And Jesus says, I have come to destroy the works of the devil. That's what Paul says, that Jesus was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. What are the works of the devil? The devil has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He has come to steal your joy. He has come to destroy your health. What glory does God have when you are on the deathbed, when you are groaning? What glory does that give to God? You are not able to worship God. You are not able to praise God. You are groaning. You are in pain. What kind of a father would rejoice to see his children in pain? What kind of a father would drive glory in having his children suffer? I believe personally that God is our healer. Christ is the healer. And at one time, Jesus, God would say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord your God. I will not put upon you these diseases that you have seen upon the Egyptians. Not because God is the one who put the diseases, but because of your disobedience. If you disobey God, then these diseases shall come upon you. But because of Jesus Christ, when we sin, we repent and God forgives us. And the Bible says, if he has sinned in the book of uh, James, if he has sinned and sin will be forgiven him and he will be healed. So when this revelation came to the heart of John G. Lake, he saw that healing was the will of God. Healing was part and parcel of salvation. So he prayed for his wife. He called his prayer partners. They prayed for the wife, and the wife got healed miraculously. The heart disease was gone. The tuberculosis was gone. And people heard about it. And people came from far to come and witness the power of God, to come and witness what God had done to this poor woman. When it was noised abroad, people came in their thousands, in their hundreds, to come and witness this miracle. It was a routed in newspapers, it was a frontline story in newspapers, and because of that, God got the glory. Not because of the sickness, but because of the healing. So sometimes there are some situations that the devil would inflict on our lives, thinking that he's doing us good but not knowing that God is going to turn around that situation. God is going to turn out around that, that sickness for his glory. And because of that, a lot of people came for prayer. And John G. Lake and his wife started ministering, healing to those people. And that's how John G. Lake went into ministry. And thousands, if not millions, were healed uh, through laying of hands during his ministry. And the Lord opened a door for him. He went to South Africa. And when he went to South Africa, uh, he established a lot of churches. Miracles were done in that country. And up to now, the church that he formed with his friend, AFM, is still standing up today. Then he came back to America, Spokane, where he established healing schools. And at one time, Spokane was regarded as the healthiest city in the world. Not because of uh, doctors, not because of hospitals, but because of the power and the presence of God. So we can see that sometimes... When you don't have the understanding and the revelation of who Jesus Christ is, sometimes you can even bury your own kids, bury your own family members, until you reach that point of having the understanding and the revelation of who Jesus is. If you look at the story that I've just narrated for you, the story of John G. Lake, my takeaway from this story is that there's a difference between knowledge and revelation. That's why poet one time said, uh, I pray that God may give you revelation knowledge in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That is in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, which means that we need God to help us to open our understanding that when we read scripture, let us have the meaning, the significance and the impact of that scripture so that we can apply it into our lives. So people of God, thank you so much for, for listening. And I would recommend that you 
uh, you comment, you, subs you subscribe, and let us know of your thoughts uh, of about this uh, message that we've just said today. Uh, we look forward to more sermons of John G. Lake. This was just an introduction of uh, what John G. Lake went through for him to be where he is. Most of us might not know what it takes to walk in the miraculous. Sometimes it might, talk, it might take uh, pain, it might take suffering, it might take sacrifice, it might take fasting, and so on. So we want to study the lives of God's generals, the lives of people that lived before us, and try to understand what is it that they went through. How, what can we learn from there? And I believe most of us who thought that God is the one that causes us to be sick have understood that the sickness comes from the devil. Even if you look at the story of uh, Job, it was not God who caused uh, Job to be sick, but it was the devil that went to the Lord to ask for permission for him to be sick. This sickness was inflicted on Job by the devil. So people of God, it is always God's will to heal. There was never a time that God rebuked Jesus for healing. And remember, Jesus at one time also said, I do what I saw my father doing. And what was it that he saw his father doing? It was healing the sick. It was delivering them that were oppressed of the devil. So know that it is God's will to heal you. The moment you know that it is the will of God to heal you, it becomes easy to receive healing from God. Because at one time, James says, He that cometh to God must believe. He must not waver. He must not waver. He must not doubt the ability of God to heal. Because the moment you doubt, you are oscillating. And the moment you're oscillating, you are double-minded. And the moment you're double-minded, you cannot receive anything from God. So you need to make your mind straight. You need to align yourself with the promise of God. Put it in your mind, put it in your heart, put it in your soul that God is your healer and God is there to heal you. I finish with this scripture in the book of Isaiah 53 verse 5, which says, But was wounded for a transgression. He was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. It doesn't say with these stripes we are going to be healed. It doesn't say with these stripes uh, we are going to be healed tomorrow. It says by his stripes we are healed, which means actually past what? Past tense, because he knew that when Jesus Christ was bruised, on the cross, when Jesus Christ was nailed on the cross, he took our infirmities. He bore our sicknesses when he hung on the cross. That's why uh, Peter at one time, he says, but he was wounded uh, for transgressions. He was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with these stripes, we are healed. That's past tense. So it's all about our aligning ourselves to the will of God, aligning ourselves with the word of God, believing God, and God would manifest himself. He says in Mark eleven twenty four. Uh, when you pray for something, believe that you have received it and you shall have it. So the moment you believe that God has healed you, you start praising him, you start believing him, you start giving glory. As you do that, he's going to manifest himself. God bless you. Amen.